Hello and welcome back to Harold Home Cooking. Basic, beginner, reproducible recipes. That was fast, I wasn't ready. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Welcome. <laughs> Everything the light touches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You wanna tell us what we're making today? <clears throat> yes. Today we're making chicken pot pie. Not to be confused with marijuana. It's not a marijuana pie. It's chicken pot pie. Today we're making chicken pot pie with a homemade crust. Hey, it won't get you high, but this chicken pot pie will fill you up. Welcome to Harold Home Cooking. So today what you're going to need for your crust is good quality flour, good quality butter, good quality vodka, and salt. And that's it for your pot pie filling. For your aromatics, you're gonna need an onion and some shallots. For your veggies, we're gonna do carrots and leeks and peas today. For our herbs, we're gonna use thyme, we're gonna use tarragon, and we're going to use nutmeg, along with some chicken stock. Oh, and cream. Cream. Did you mention the vodka? Yeah, that goes in our crust. Okay, just oh, making sure. Oh, unless you're drinking it while you're making the no, chicken pot no. pie. Is that what you're saying? No, it's not I'm saying that. Uh-huh. And you're going to need chicken to make it a chicken pot pie. Yes. So let's get started. <laughs> so the butter you're going to be using needs to be put in the freezer for about 20 minutes before you're ready to make your crust. So Paul's going to measure out three and three fourths cup of flour. We're going to measure out one teaspoon of salt. We're going to take our three sticks of frozen butter and we're going to cut them into chunks. Hey Meg, why are we not using a food processor to make our crust? Well, Jeremy Shex, I think that's how you say his name. Shout out to ShexEats.com. He has some great recipes on there. He suggests that if you use your fingers to process the butter instead, it ends up being more crusty and delicious. The reason you want your butter frozen beforehand, if it is at all warm, then it is going to melt in your fingers and you don't want that. You're basically doing what the food processor would be doing. Are you just saying I need to warm up? You need to warm up. Thanks she stood up. upon the balcony, inexplicably mimicking his hicca hiccuping and amicably welcoming him in. The big black bug bit the big black bear. <laughs> big black bear bleed See, blue blood. You need to warm up. You I'm, warm you're up right, you're right. Things. I do not butter. know how to make a chicken pot pie. You're gonna learn today, boy. We've got two large carrots here and uh, I'm just gonna chop them up. <clears throat> what? <laughs> well, what? I had an accident. What'd you do? I just splattered flour all over myself. It'll go along with the stain on your shirt. Do, 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 do. Oh, yes. Do you see it, Sunny? I thought y'all wouldn't notice. Right. Well, <laughs> I just wore it because I know how much Megan loves when I wear these types of shirts. I ask him if he'll please unbutton them more, but he'll only do two buttons. Gross. <laughs> Am I the sous chef in this one? I am, aren't I? Well, no, we're both sous chefs. <laughs> so these, are leeks. You only use the white and light green parts. I'll show you that here in a minute, but you also really need to rinse them off if you don't want your pot pie to taste like Fort Sand. Walton Beach or something. <laughs> because you're gonna want to get all the grit off and wash them really good. Look at this, that's the dirt I'm telling you all about. You gotta wash these suckers. You see in here, there's some light green parts that you'll be able to use. And then we chop them up now and we're gonna wash them off later. Now we are gonna add our vodka to our dough. Normally people just use water, but 
If you add too much water, it can inhibit the gluten and it keeps it from being as crispy and crusty. So if you add vodka, the vodka actually evaporates. I don't know exactly the science, but it works awesome and the vodka totally cooks out. So we're using half a cup of vodka and then we're gonna do half a cup of filtered water. Okay, we're gonna add a few ice cubes in there because you want your water to be super cold. Now we're gonna start adding in the water a little bit at a time and incorporating it together. You wanna continue to knead it until it just barely sticks together so that you don't overwork your dough. Here we go. I usually find I end up using about three fourths of a cup of this water vodka mixture. all the dirt I've chopped these up now they're gonna go in here we are gonna run water over these things just make sure that water runs clear and then you feel them and you don't have this gritty feeling and you're gonna want to wash off your cutting board now because it's covered in dirt Now that is delicious. I didn't know anything about leeks until I met you, Megan. If you've never had this particular vegetable, give it a try. I mean, even if you were to just, you know, put these on a skillet with some olive oil, some salt, pepper, maybe throw some garlic in there, it's very delicious. It's definitely an aromatic as well, but it's so good. It's like a really delicious side dish to have. So now we're taking our dough and we're going to press it into a rectangle. It's still going to be pretty crumbly, so don't worry. Don't expect it to stick together totally. As you can see, it kind of has some breakage, and that's okay. Now we're going to cut it into three pieces, and we're going to layer those pieces on top of one another, and we're going to press down again and make a new rectangle. bits on the sides as you do it as you can see it's starting to stick together a whole lot better we'll do it again so you're gonna cut it into thirds twice and look you can see the layers that's what's gonna make it so fluffy and pastry like okay so we've pressed down our dough two times we've got a new rectangle and we're gonna cut it in half and you're gonna store half of it in the freezer for another time and we're gonna use half of it now because our tray is extra big over there, you can see it's a big rectangular thing, I'm going to use about three-fourths of it instead. So we'll make biscuits or something at another time. And when you store it, you're gonna fold it in half one more time. And you can use the plastic wrap to do that. And then roll it up tight into a circular. And then it's ready to go for another pie or another use. And I'll put and this in the freezer, Mick? Yes, in the freezer. Date it. Oh my gosh, Paul. <laughs> I just want to please you. That's, that's all I want to do. So if I have to act like a professor, a professor. Don't buy this. This is all absolutely ridiculousness. I don't call the shots around here. Oh my gosh. So we're gonna scrape this guy up. Again, look at those layers. We're gonna take him. And we're gonna fold him over as well. Making sure to seal him up. And then we're gonna stick him in the freezer for 20 minutes to get really cold before we roll him out. And in the meantime, we are going to make the interior of our pot pie. Over here we have five cups of chicken stock plus two extra cubes or teaspoons, however your bouillon does. This is going to ensure that your flavors are outstanding. Don't second guess yourself. You got this, guys. You just want this diced? Yes. Don't be ugly to me, what's your deal? 
You're grump and steel right now. Is it because I'm making you cut onions? I am the cutter. <laughs> I'm the, so I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna just cut you. No. Dang. Those are fighting words. This paper towel, I don't like this paper towel. Most of the recipes that you'll find for pot pie include carrots and onions and peas, and that's it. But don't forget, like today we're using shallots, we're using leeks, you could use mushrooms. There's a whole bunch of yummy veggies and stuff that you can add in to really up your pot pie game. And I highly recommend experimenting with those. Over here in this guy, we've got our butter. We're gonna heat him on medium heat to melt our butter down, and then we're gonna add our onions and our shallots. It's gonna be good. Let's get these onions to sweat. You're gonna add your onions in it and let them saute for just a minute, just till they start sweating just a little bit. Then we're gonna add in the leeks for just a couple minutes more. And then we're gonna add in the shallots and then they basically should be ready to add in our flour. I wanna spray your pan down. Our onions are sizzling just a little bit. We're gonna add in our leeks. Who's filming this? Who this is, is with your, us? Who's watching us? Is there somebody watching us? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> We're actually crazy people. This is just what we do all the time. We just talk to ourselves. Actually, I do talk to myself quite a bit, so Paul can attest to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she also steals my songs. 30 seconds later, she'll start singing it. And I'll say, were you just singing this? Sometimes I feel like we're singing the same songs in our heads, but... It's our Cinderella connection. Oh. <sighs> yeah. That was a long time ago. It was more than 10 minutes ago. Oh, that's a big joke. All right, no adding in our yet. shallots. Now look at that, that is good right there. That's buttery, that's what you want. And we're cooking down our veggies, but they don't have to be cooked down all the way because remember, we're gonna stick them in an oven. In fact, we should probably preheat the oven, 375 degrees. 375 degrees, engage. We're gonna have about four to six cups of all this chicken. And this, this is the rotisserie chicken that you got at the grocery store. You want something chopped, you need a cleaver. Leave it to Cleaver or Sweeney Todd. Our onions and leeks and shallots have been sweating in here for probably about 10 minutes by this point. They're starting to get super soft. We're gonna add in three fourths a cup of flour. This is gonna thicken our mixture and give us that nice creaminess that you're looking for with chicken pot pie. And we're gonna stir and let that cook for about one to two minutes. And we're gonna probably turn it down at this point. Oh, look who it is, everyone. He's up and at him. Okay, now we're adding our five cups of chicken stock plus two cubes or teaspoons of bouillon. And we're gonna let that cook for a couple more minutes. The vegetable portion of every meal are the peas for me. You're never gonna live that down. Never gonna live that down. Never gonna let you forget. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it up, then embarrass you. Right, so we're starting to thicken up just a little bit. This is why you wear an apron. Not us though, right guys? Not us. Although I've got an awesome apron that I use for barbecuing. It's leather. It's leather, it's nice. It's pretty cool. You add in a fourth a cup of cream. And then we're gonna add in salt and pepper. We're gonna add in our tarragon, half a tablespoon maybe. Sounds good. 
Ooh, it smells so good. It's like a sweet. <laughs> it's like a sweet uh, fennel or licorice. It's like a licorice flavor. Okay, we're gonna add in our carrots. These are a little bit large. They might be a little crunchy. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Don't ask me to chop the carrots then. We're gonna add in a whole bag of peas. We're gonna stir this up really good. We're going to put in some fresh thyme. This is thyme. We're gonna zest some fresh nutmeg in. Nutmeg is amazing. If you're ever cooking something with cream, I recommend adding a little bit of nutmeg. Just go for it? Yeah. How much? Just go until you make a little pile. A little pile. Nutmeg. That's your nickname. That's true. Nutmeg. nutmeg. What's nutmeg doing today? Well, I don't know. You don't know? What am I doing today? When people <laughs> ask me, I don't want to say I don't know. You say you don't know? I'm protecting your privacy. It's oh. none of their business. Well, thank you. Oh. oh, no! We've got a nut. Dig him out! It looks hot. <laughs> Alright, is that enough nutmeg? That's we'll enough. Going? Yeah, that's great. Right. Add it until we can't fill it up anymore. It's well, not a lot. But it's gonna be good regardless. There's a guy right down here that would love it if we had some leftovers. Mmm, it's starting to resemble Popeye. And besides these carrots being a little crunchy, just saying, you are basically finished. We're also gonna need a big tray to go underneath the pot pie because it is very likely going to overflow. So Paul's gonna grab us one of those. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome, Megan. I'm just following orders. This is a conversation we have once a day. It's okay, don't worry about me. Don't, don't listen to anything I have to say. Megan just always treats me like I'm an idiot. What? <laughs> that is so far from the truth. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I'm gonna pay for that one later. <laughs> it's awful. It's like when you project what you do onto other people. Gas lamping. <laughs> Gas lamping. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. Take a dish towel and you will put it under your board. It will keep your board, believe it or not, from rolling around. To keep your guys from rolling around. Yeah. All right, you got this. And you're gonna wanna put flour on your rolling pin. Using extra flour is not going to hurt your dough. And you're gonna flip it and move different directions, kind of going around in a circle, working it out. You can still see all these layers that are gonna be so crispy and delicious. Moment of truth, don't mess this up or you will not be having chicken pot pie. I need a scraper. Scraper! <laughs> I need a scraper here! Yes. Look at that. That's goodness. That is goodness right there. Now we're gonna write our initials in it so when it dries, it'll be a memory forever. And then you roll it off. And adjust as needed. I'm gonna pinch the edges a little bit. It's not beautiful, but it's delicious. And we've got That's some extra that. pieces over That's here. Thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Mm, those are the best parts where it's like double yum. We're going to brush it with egg wash, sprinkle salt on the top, and cut three slits in it. And your egg wash is just half egg, half water, whisked together, brushed on. And I think for pretty, we're gonna put a few sprigs of the tarragon on top as well, and the thyme. That, that appropriate? That looks amazing. That appropriate, you don't need to do it over? So you guess me? <laughs> Make me feel bad? <laughs> no. Okay, cool. Slits. Yep, we're gonna slice some slits, slits in there. I once knew a guy named Slits in prison. <laughs> grab a knife. All right. Now I'm not doing this. So I really do know it will get second guessed. You cook it, the juice and all the inside stuff is gonna bubble up through these slits and it looks so great. 
Or Vince. We could have just used the word Vince. Okay, Vince. That's probably cleaner, nicer. I once knew a guy named Vince in prison. <laughs> what? Are you ready for me to put this in the oven? <laughs> I love you. All right. Oh, wait, wait. Get a good picture. All we right. are ready to stick it in the oven for one hour, and we're going to check on it at 45 minutes. Here we go. in 45 minutes. It's what moment is it? Moment of truth. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Are we praying? It's been an hour. It is bubbly. It is hot. It is gorgeous. Always good to have a good trivet. Nice trivet handy during these trivial trying times. Megan, that looks gorgeous. Your recipe is fantastic. You did a great job. Look at this bubble. Look at this. You want to let it rest for about 10 minutes. It'll help the creaminess to set up. Otherwise, it's going to be super liquidy. Today, we cook for you chicken pot pie. With a homemade crust. Remember, this is a recipe that you can make your own as well, and we hope that you enjoy it as much as we are about to. Thanks for watching Harold Home Cooking. Basic beginner reproducible recipes. That looks really delicious. I'm not gonna lie.